Today's parashah is all about offerings, and it's the law of the offering, really. Uh, point one, burnt offerings. And there's burnt offerings of animals from the herd, in other words, bulls, ox. Then there's the sheep or goats from the flock. And if you can't afford that, there's birds, and namely turtle doves and pigeons. I think about that all the time as a turtle dove that lives on a light post or likes to stand on a light post just outside my house and I hear him every morning cooing. Yeah. Second one point is the grain offering. And it tells how people, the people of Israel are to bring the grain offering. They can bring baked cakes or they can br bring it on the, the griddle, which I imagine would be a lot like pancakes, or it can be in a pan. The third one is first fruits offerings, and then sin offering, which is primarily unintentional sin. When you've realized it, the Lord has, the Holy Spirit has revealed it to you, then you bring your sin offering, and that's if a, I already said that, if a person sins unintentionally. It says, if a person, that's first of all. The second one, if a priest sins. And the third point is if the one in the con someone in the congregation sins. I don't know how that differs from the person, but it, he makes these points separately. And when a leader sins. And then it says if any one of the common people sins. And again, I'm not sure what the differentiation is, but that's what he brings out. And then there, the, I put in Roman numerals, I'm not always good at reading those, six point, guilt offerings. And the seventh point, restitution. In other words, if you wronged your brother, if you've stolen from him, then it tells how to make restitution to him. And basically, you give him what you've taken plus 20%. 20% 20, 20 that's a pretty good cut that's more of what Yahweh wants in our tithe so that's the basic outline of this portion and we started a new book Leviticus but it's called they call it the Vayikra which is the first word in the book that's how they title all their books. And really, the Torah, we made the separation in the books. It was just all written out. You know, Moses was just writing it all out. So he came to, we came to the end of Exodus. And in Exodus 40, Praise God, it's so good to stand before you guys again. Yes, amen. Verse 34. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So we're wrapping up Exodus. Uh, the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt, brought into the wilderness, brought to Sinai. God gave Moses the plans for the tabernacle. He tells the people all about it. They made it. And at the close of Exodus, we have the tabernacle, brand new, spanking new, and God fills it. Very exciting. But the glory is so great, and glory means heavy, so it's like Moses would be knocked down to the ground if he even got near it. He couldn't get into the tent of meeting. And that's the close of Exodus. What happens at the beginning of Exodus? And I don't know why it says, he, why we call this he called, by, by Yichra, I keep having problems with that word, me, which is translated he calls, and clearly it says Yahweh called. I don't know why we don't call it Yahweh called, except they don't want to use the name of Yahweh. Bless his name. Then Yahweh called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting. So here he is. He couldn't get in. And now Yahweh's saying, 
It's okay, come, come back. And this, we, it's Leviticus, it's all about the Levites, but Yahweh tells them to speak to the sons of Israel. He wants everyone to know how the priests operate, what they're to do. And it's very important because offerings are to be able to come to God. He's, he called Moses, but he's really calling all of us. And he's saying, bring your offerings so there's nothing between us, so you can be right before me and we can be close and intimate. I don't want you off at a distance. And my glory is going to keep you off at a distance until you deal with sin or anything that's between you and God. God is holy. And we have to be holy to come to him. And what this really stirs in me is um, thinking back to when he first called me. And that's what I want to leave with all of you. Think about when he first called you. When he first called Moses, he was at the burning bush. And Moses was just thought, I'm going to turn aside and look at this because the bush, there, it wasn't smoking, it wasn't being consumed, it was really something different. And God called to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. And how did Moses respond? Here am I. When God first called me, I didn't respond like that yet. I had to think about it for a while. And probably like Moses, when God filled the tabernacle, I was afraid because he was revealing his glory. Just like he did at the burning bush, he was re revealing his glory. It's fire. And there's a natural fear of getting burned. But eventually I did respond to him. And I just want to leave that with you. Think about when he first called you. Remember that. Make that, uh, set up a pillar to remember constantly. When you first met him, when he first called you, and when you first responded and said, Here am I, Lord. <laughs>